Welcome back, my dears. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> if you're new here, my name is Pamela, or Pam to some of you, and on this channel, I provide fragrance recommendations, reviews, and tips to help you curate and care for your perfume collection. I do try to plug in a little fun family, beauty, makeup, and lifestyle, as well as some motivational content here and there. The month of May actually commemorates so much. Mother's Day, mental health awareness, women's health awareness. So this month, I selected for fragrances to kind of vibe with all of that. So if you're interested, let's get started. The first fragrance I'm going to be talking about is Cookie Crunch by Cookie Egg. The nose behind this fragrance is Rosa Vaya, and this is a tasty, delicious dessert type fragrance. It does give me that crispy elements of cookie crumbs and meringue mixed between, or meringue mixed between. I really like this. It reminds me a lot of Lyra, but it's definitely different. After this decant is finished, I might pick up a full bottle, but I'm still on the fence. So this is Cookie Crush by Coquille. Next up is Alien Goddess Supra Floral, and this is by Mugler. This is an amber floral fragrance. It's slightly musky. There is more of a fruity, powdery element, and I do get the animalic vibes with this fragrance. There are some interesting notes in here like Cactus Flower, Prickly Pear, and Immortelle. I like this fragrance. I think Alien Goddess Supra Floral is a pretty fragrance, hence the reason I chose to wear it this month. It's a light, uplifting version of the Alien Goddess Flankers. Don't mind it. I might pick up a full bottle, but I'm still again on the fence. My next fragrance is another decant. This is XJ1861 Decast by Zerzhov. This fragrance is one of my favorites from the Zerzhov house. It's got my vibe. It's sweet, balsamic. It's got a tad bit of tobacco in there, and it has tuberose, which I y'all know I love tuberose. Now, this fragrance, I really enjoy it because it's sweet. It's got that citrus vibe of mandarin in the opening. The tobacco is also in the opening. I really appreciate this, and this might be a full bottle if I get it at a discount. The last mini I am wearing is by Maison Francis Kirkshawn, and this is the travel set. This is the Baccarat Rouge 540. I am trying to finish up my travel set, and I have a little bit left in the one that's inside this decanter, and I have one more to finish. So this is a saffron fragrance. I don't have to explain Baccarat Rouge 540 because pretty much everybody already knows about it. Next up is one of my favorite fragrances. This is Poison Girl Eau de Toilette by Dior. I absolutely love this. It's girly, it's spicy, yet mysterious. It's flirty, it's friendly. <laughs> I just really like it a lot. It has almondy vibes, so you've got the nutty, fruity elements as well. I have not been able to smell the Eau de Parfum version of this, but I love the Eau de Toilette. So this is Poison Girl by Dior, and it's in my tray this month. Next up is a fragrance that not too many people talk about. This is Rose Milano by Giorgio Armani, and it's in the Armani Privé line. The perfumers behind this is Daphne Bouget and Marie Salomon. And Marie Salomon happens to be one of my favorite perfumers. She's made Lunfeline. She's part of... Um, you know, the Bewitching Yasmin, Black Opium. So some of the really good fragrances she has her nose on or has had her hand in making. This happens to be a beautiful floral fragrance, but it's very much, in my opinion, very elegant. And that's one of the reasons I like it. It offers such a beautiful interpretation of rose that is like no other. Next up is a fragrance I hardly ever talk about. In fact, I hardly ever talk about this house. This is Veronique Goodbye, and the scent is Mimosa in the Air. Now, I have to label these fragrances only because all the bottles look the same, and I don't know what I'm looking at, so I label them all. This has Mimosa and Vetiver listed as the notes. It's very much a fragrance I can't put my finger on. It just smells pretty, light, easy to wear. I find this to be quite luxurious to wear as well when I spray it because it doesn't smell like everything else. So I pulled it out for me because, you know, why not? Next up is a fragrance that I am enjoying. This is Valea by Parfums de Mali. It's one of the later releases. This is a fruity fragrance, but I find that I get more of the aldehydes in here, which I'm not even a huge aldehydic lover. And I love the way the aldehydes, the musk, combines with the florals and the woodiness of this fragrance. I wear this quite a lot. In fact, I've worn it three times already, and we're not even in the middle of the month, and I've gotten compliments each time. So this is Valea by Parfums de Mali. 
Speaking of musk, this is a Narciso Rodriguez's Poudre, my favorite musk in my collection. So far, there are no other musk perfumes I have in my collection that out, out smells or out musks. Narciso Poudre. I really enjoy this fragrance a lot. I don't know if... To be honest with you, I'm very biased because this is a love at first sniff for me. That's why I'm probably loving it so much and there is nothing that tops it. So it's in my tray for this month. Next up is a flanker that happens to be one of my favorites. This is Valentino's Born in Roma Coral Fantasy. As you can see, there is a significant dent in this bottle because your girl likes this fragrance that much. Now, Born in Roma Coral Fantasy has a kiwi note in there that not too many people pick up on. It's what they were looking forward to and they don't really smell it but on my skin it does pull the kiwi and i like it so this is coral fantasy while well, born in room of coral fantasy by valentino okay so we're six minutes in let's keep it rolling this is house of sillage this is a fair my favorite bottle <laughs> i love this this is the avatar fragrance this is a very in my opinion a very a unique fragrance. It transforms. It smells a little marine sometimes, a little salty sometimes, a little more fruity, a little more musky, a little bit more mossy. It has, you know, varying... I think it's very diverse. Yeah, that's what I should call it, a diverse fragrance. Of course, the bottle is absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, I like looking at it in my tray. So this is Avatar by the House of Sillage, and it's in my tray for this month. Also in my tray is Prada Paradox, a fragrance I've talked about not wanting to purchase before because it smelled too similar to others in my collection. But lo and behold, I got rid of them and I kept this one. So Prada Paradox is really pretty in my opinion. It's a pretty fragrance. I do not get like a whole bunch of compliments, but I'm not really looking for compliments when I wear this. I find this to be very easy to wear and it makes me feel pretty. So that's why it's in my tray for this month. Another fragrance that makes me feel really pretty is Pro Ads Cherry Syrup Green. This fragrance has a slightly heavier vibe but the apple in here is what I don't know it's I like it I well maybe I dare say I love it I lay I layer this with Kama Sutra and I get tons of compliments so that's probably why so the cherry the Kama Sutra which is rose and of course the apple in here so this is cherry syrup green by Proad in my tray again this month is one of my favorite Dior fragrances. This is J'adore Parfum Doe. This is a very milky fragrance. It's soft. It's very, in my opinion, sensorial. Makes me feel very comfortable. Keeps my skin soft because of the hydration properties in here. Really like this. If you have not gotten an opportunity to smell J'adore's Parfum Doe, you really need to get your hands on it. This perfume has no alcohol, so you can spray it as much as you want, rub it into your skin, use it as a topper for your lotion really love this and i love wearing it at night which is when i mostly wear it next up is a fragrance i rarely wear <laughs> And you can tell by the fact that the bottle hardly has a dent. This is Tom Ford's Soleil Positano, De Positano. And this is actually from, you know, the private collection. Now, this is the Eau de Parfum. I have both the Parfum, Eau de Parfum, as well as the Eau de Toilette. And I think I want, I pulled this out because I want to give this more use. It's a playful fragrance. It's easy to wear during very hot temperatures. Um, the few times I've worn it in the past, I found it quite enjoyable and actually... You know, if you're going to like beachy type events, this would be perfect for that. If you're going to be near water, this would be perfect for that, you know, poolside. So that's Soleil de Positano. The next fragrance in my tray is Jasmine's Marzipan Eau de Parfum by Lancome. This is from the Maison Lancome's exclusive fragrance line. Well, I wouldn't say it's exclusive, but I guess that's what it's labeled as. This has white flowers in it. Jasmine, of course, it's a tad bit woody. I found that I wasn't wearing this fragrance a lot, and it wasn't that I didn't like Jasmine's Marzipan. It's because I just have other fragrances that I want to wear. Now, I do happen to like the scent of Jasmine, and I decided to to give this one i want to put a dent in this bottle so that's why it's in this month's tray I, I think i've worn it once but i intend to wear it some more this month next up is a favorite of mine this is allure by chanel guys i really like this fragrance so much i have a ton of chanel you know by any stretch of the imagination okay i have more than 10 chanel fragrances this one happens to be one of my favorites now this is the original eau de parfum i do have the intense which i absolutely love as well but this right here, every time I spray it on my skin, I am excited. So it's in my tray for this month. 
Next up is a favorite of mine. This is Dolce & Gabbana's Devotion. This is a gourmand fragrance that has a lemon cookie vibe similar to that of um, Lyra and um, Cookier's... Uh, cookie crunch. I really like this fragrance quite a bit. I find that the dry down, the, you know, type of clean and fluid vibe that people have talked about, that kind of dies down completely. And this is just left with a beautiful lemon cookie vanilla fragrance. So this is Devotion and it's in my tray for this month. Next in my tray is a fragrance that even I don't talk a lot about, but I've had it going on two years now, so it needs to be in my tray and to be worn some more. That's why I pulled it out. So this is Kaisa or Kaisa. I can't pronounce it correctly. If you know how to pronounce it, please let me know down in the comments. I, I won't take offense. This is the fragrance that has cardamom, pink peppercorn, black licorice. It's just unique in the way it is composed. And I find it quite easy to wear. I'm excited to wear it some more this month because, um, like I said, you know, I got a lot of perfumes and I need to wear them up. So Kaisa or Keisha or Kaija, please help me out, guys, down in the comments, is in my tray for this month. Please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on these fragrances that I selected for this month. Have you tried them? Have you sniffed them? You own them? I want to hear from you because I just do. <laughs> okay. If you're interested in seeing more content, head over to my homepage and I have tons of videos over there, shorts, and I have some live videos up as well. There is tons of things I talk about in terms of fragrances, so please check it out. If you like this type of content, make sure you thumbs up. But if you're not subscribed yet, please make sure you join the Pam Fam. I would love to have you over here. Please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.